good morning. It's good to see you today. Glad you found this channel and stopped by to worship with us. I'm Ron Schultz, the interim minister at Union, the church at Chelsea Park. We're a United Methodist congregation. We gather every Sunday morning uh, for morning worship. You can find us here uh, on this YouTube channel. We also do in-person worship with masks and proper social distancing and washing your hands. Uh, we'd love to have you join us in person. If that's possible for you, we meet at uh, the church sanctuary in Chelsea uh, at 1030. Uh, so whichever one of those might fit your needs best, uh, we're just happy to have you uh, be a part of our time together. Our scripture today comes from the book of Revelation. Chapter 7, beginning the reading with verse 9. And today I'm reading from the message. I looked again. I saw a huge crowd, too huge to count. Everyone was there, all nations and tribes, all races and languages. And they were standing, dressed in white robes and waving palm branches, standing before the throne and the Lamb, and heartily singing, Salvation to our God on his throne, Salvation to the Lamb. All who were standing around the throne, angels, elders, animals, fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Oh yes, the blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, the honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Oh yes. Just then, one of the elders addressed me. Who are these dressed in white robes, and where do they come from? Taken aback, I said, Oh, sir, I have no idea, but you must know. Then he told me, These are those who come from the great tribulation, and they've washed their robes, scrubbed them clean in the blood of the Lamb. That's why they're standing before God's throne. They serve him day and night in his temple. The one on the throne will pitch his tent there for them. No more hunger, no more thirst, no more scorching heat. The lamb on the throne will shepherd them, will lead them to spring waters of life, and God will wipe away every last tear from their eyes. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. Amen. Gracious God, as we worship you now, we pray that your spirit will fall upon us and open our eyes that we may see your word for our lives today. Open our ears that we may hear your word for our lives today. And guide us in the way that leads to life eternal. Amen. I don't know if you can see clearly from where you are, but we're with John the Revelator in the heavenly throne room, in the heavenly temple, uh, the counterpart to the temple in Jerusalem. John isn't looking on from a great distance. He's right there in the room with the four living creatures and 24 elders and us. One of those elders asked John a question that we all would like an answer to. Who are all these people? The elder answers his own question and answers the question we desperately want answered. These people dancing and singing around the throne these are those who have come out of the great tribulation. Those who have come out of the great suffering. They have lived through the nightmare and can now wake up to a glorious, fresh new morning. Their clothes are not white because they necessarily lived lives of total holiness and purity. Their clothes are white because of the blood of the Lamb. 
the sacrificial Passover like death of Jesus himself has rescued them from slavery to sin, making them able to stand in the very presence of the living God. These are those who have come out of the great suffering. We know a little bit about great suffering, don't we? We've lived life in difficult times. We've raised children. We've buried loved ones. It's the year 2020, for goodness sake. COVID-19 has changed the whole world. The world is on fire, as we hear reports about fires in California and other places. Hurricane-force winds yet again blew across this great land and the winds tore up so much. The United Methodist Church is in great turmoil and seems to be on the brink of a divorce. The United States is in great turmoil on the eve of election of a president. People are deeply divided. People are sick. People are dying. People are unemployed. People are afraid their money's going to run out. People are afraid. We know about great suffering. And here we are reading a 2,000-year-old text. Now let me ask you, how many times during a normal week do you do something like that? In the midst of all the strife and turmoil, how many times do you read a 2,000-year-old text? Most of the time when we gather together for worship, we focus on living out the Christian faith. What do you have to do to live out the Christian faith? But today is All Saints Sunday. It's that day that the church sets aside in order for us to remember. To remember that we're a part of a body of people who continue to talk to the dead. We continue to talk to the saints. The saints speak to us, and we listen. Today we remember and give thanks to God for past people, for dead people. Today we stand in the throne room with John, and we see a great crowd dancing, celebrating, and we hear them singing. The crowd is bigger than it was last year. The crowd has more people. There are the 200,000 plus people who have died due to COVID-19 symptoms. There are loved ones who have died from all manner of illnesses and strife. There are strangers who have been added to the number, names we'll never know, but they have died and they too are in that great crowd dancing around the throne. And yet we know from our church at Union, the church at Chelsea Park, that somewhere in that great crowd, there are some new names because over the last year, they left our presence here on earth and joined that great crowd of witnesses. And so today on All Saints Sunday, we pause to give thanks for their life as we remember them and call out their names. June Collins, who died in October of 2019. Larry Bright, who died in November 2019. Paul Champion, who died in December 2019. Linda Salser, who died in August of 2020. And Elvis Walton, 
who died in September 2020. We remember these and we give thanks for their lives. And we know that they are in that great cloud of witnesses gathered around the throne in the throne room. And when we look at that large group of people, we see that it's a, a diverse group, a multicultural group. And there are too many to count. They're all dressed in white celebration clothes. And they're waving palm branches as a sign of their celebration. They're celebrating around the throne of God. And John hears the elder ask, who are all these people? And then he hears the answer. These are the ones who have passed through the great tribulation, but who have kept the faith. These are the ones who kept worshiping and serving God in spite of any pain and difficulty they went through. Now they sing and shout in triumph. From right here, from right here, we can look back and we can look forward. Walk with me for a minute through the cemetery, if you will. When you walk through the cemetery at Union, the church itself, Chelsea Park, you see gravestones of young men and young women who travel to this part of the country following the Battle of Horseshoe Bend down in Tallapoosa County. They came here and they built homes here and they settled here. They raised crops. Some fought in the Civil War. Some fought in World War I. Others in World War II. And still others in the Korean War and in Vietnam. They planted crops here. They worked on the railroads here. They built the church. They raised their families. And they endured sickness, bankruptcy, stock market crash, murder, train wrecks, heartbreaks. Remembering these tribulations endured by these saints from the past, gives us courage and strength for the present and for the uncertain future. Just look at that crowd dancing around the throne. They have suffered. They have struggled. They have known their own tribulations. Look at them dancing around the throne now and listen to them singing and take heart. There's nothing we go through today in our attempts to be the church that all the saints have not been through in the past. If we can't point to some people in every age and say, look at their life. You want to see what it looks like to live out this faith we talk about in here? Look at them. They weren't perfect. They have suffered. They've passed through great tribulations, but they have remained faithful to God who was faithful to them. That's what it looks like to practice the faith in visible ways. If we can't point out lives like that, if we can't produce lives like that through the church, then we really have nothing to say. Many of you, if you stop for a moment, can think of someone who lived the faith in such a way that it caused you to say, I'd like to live that way myself. And here you are, doing your best to do exactly that. Those are the people we see dancing and hear singing and celebrating because God has wiped away every tear from their eyes. We're in the throne room. We are surrounded with people who have gone through tribulations and remained faithful to God, who remained faithful to them. 
And because we're surrounded, we can say, like that great old spiritual, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Because of God's faithfulness, we lift up our voices today on this All Saints Sunday and sing with all of those who surround us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May these ancient words strengthen your faith. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you for being a part of our worship today. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your faithfulness and your good stewardship. It might be that you exercise your stewardship by giving your gifts, tithes, and offerings through the offering plate in the sanctuary. You can mail them in to the address that you see on the screen, or you can use the uh, web address and go to the giving portal at the church uh, online website. However you choose to make uh, your gift tithe and offering a part of the collections at Union the Church at Chelsea Park, please know that we join you in prayer that God will accept these gifts and bless and multiply them and use them in the continued work of God's kingdom. Thank you for who you are and for all that you do. And thank you for your life as you live out your faith as all of the saints have done who've gone before us. Go now in peace, and go knowing that you're surrounded this week by the saints of God who have gone before us, who cheer us on as we walk that path of faith. Go in peace, and go in courage, and know that God goes with you. Amen.